Hello and welcome to this video. If you don't know me, my name is Janika and I am from Finland and I have now lived in the Netherlands for about two and a half years. Prior to this, we also lived abroad when I was very young and yeah, we lived abroad until I was like six years old. So I don't remember much of it, but I do think it has shaped me a bit as who I am as a person today. And then I've also lived one year in Australia when I was there on high school exchange. And then I've also lived half a year in Indonesia Bali where I went on a university exchange so I do think I have a bit of experience of what it's like to live abroad and yeah I'm living abroad currently as well moving abroad is something very exciting but also scary at the same time and in this video we'll be talking about some tough realities that yeah are a part of moving abroad at least for most people and I hope this video will be helpful for anyone who is maybe thinking about taking that leap of faith and moving to another country or for you who is already living in another country or have lived in another country before then you can probably relate to a lot of the things that I'm going to be talking about and maybe also find some comfort in it knowing that you're not alone with those feelings. I am not going to just sit and talk here though um, I want to make this into a bit of a cozy moment and make it feel like we're spending some time together. I'm going to be cooking a very traditional Finnish dish. It's a dish called macaroni latico, which basically means macaroni casserole. <laughs> I know it sounds a bit weird, but it's a very simple recipe that does take a bit of time to make though. But yeah, it's a very simple Finnish recipe. So if you've ever wanted to learn to cook something from Finland, then yeah, I'll be linking the recipe down below. And yeah, let's get this video started. Here you can see the ingredients needed for the dish. It is very simple, so there's not a lot you need well as the name said some macaroni and then well usually you would use normal minced meat but I'm gonna use this like veggie alternative and then some shredded cheese onion and yeah I'm lactose intolerant so I'm using this oat milk instead of regular milk but either works just fine and then egg and uh, this like bouillon and then of course like salt pepper some basic seasonings but yeah it is very simple ingredients okay so let's start by cutting some onion so the first thing i want to talk about is homesickness and for me personally when i have experienced homesickness it hasn't been as I would have maybe imagined it to be. It's been more of this like irritation than the thought of, oh man, I miss home, I wanna go home. And yeah, let me explain this. So when you move to a new place, usually for the first few weeks or often even months, you will experience something called a honeymoon phase. And this is when everything is new, everything is exciting, when you're just loving life and everything is amazing. But then after the honeymoon phase, once it's over, usually reality hits and you kind of will experience the exact opposite. So instead of noticing all the good things and being very positive about everything, you kind of tend to do the opposite and you become very negative and you have learned a bit like what are the bad things and you might fixate on the things that are wrong in this new country. It is very similar to when you are dating someone you know what it feels like after you've gotten out of the honeymoon phase it's in this negative phase when you usually face a lot of culture shocks and yeah you might feel lonely and all the problems kind of arise up so my advice for you who is moving abroad or maybe you are someone who is currently going through this phase after the honeymoon phase my advice for you is that don't give up when you're in this phase it will not last um, the good days are still ahead of you and you will start to get used to your new life and your new routines and you will start to enjoy your new country again of course if this feeling really doesn't go away and you still feel really bad after I don't know half a year or even a year after living in another country then maybe living abroad or this specific country is not the place for you but yeah don't give up when everything's feeling bad because it will not last it is just homesickness even though you might not fully realize that it's homesickness. Instead, you see it as this, everything in this new country is bad kind of sickness. But yeah, it is totally normal, so don't worry about it. Okay, so now next, um, we're gonna cook the onion and the fake meat 
and the macaroni and I'm also gonna put the oven on to 200 degrees and yeah first we need to cook the things on a pan and like boil the macaroni before then putting it in the oven The next thing I want to talk about is the sense of one's home and like where is home now? Because yeah, it can get quite confusing once you live in a different country because now instead of having just one place that feels like home, you have two or maybe even more than that if you have lived in several different countries. When you've moved to a new country, one of the best feelings is when you start feeling like this new country is really becoming your home. But be aware this will most likely take a longer time than what you are expecting at first. It's not something that's gonna happen in the blink of an eye or even after a few months. Somewhere I read for a place to feel completely like home and for you to in integrate Inter interrogate? In integrate? I don't know, you probably know <laughs> the word that I'm meaning. <laughs> it takes approximately three years, so it's quite a long time to be honest. In August it will be three years since I moved to the Netherlands. I do think Leiden and the Netherlands has felt like a home already for a longer time, but yeah, do keep that in mind when moving to another country. But the truth is that even if you feel like this new country is now your home, it might never feel a hundred percent like your home because yeah, you're not from there. It's not your home country. You maybe don't feel the same sense of belonging as the local people, which is, you know, normal. But then at the same time, it also also feels like your home country isn't really your home either anymore. Like when I have visited Finland, I feel like a bit of an alien in my own country. And I feel like even if I would now move back to Finland and live there for the rest of my life, I would always have this feeling a little bit. I wouldn't feel a hundred percent anymore like it is my home because I've had homes also elsewhere. I remember thinking and feeling like this already back when I came back from Australia and Bali and yeah it just didn't feel completely like home anymore it kind of feels like my heart has split into several little pieces and instead of having one place that feels completely 100% like my home I now instead have several places around the world that all feel a little bit like my home which in a way is kind of beautiful and poetic in a way but it can also be difficult not feeling like you belong anywhere 100% so yeah it comes with both pros and cons so making now something called milk egg or egg milk it's basically just eggs and milk mixed together so something that goes a bit hand in hand with having several homes is also like the feeling of belonging and like where do you really then fit in anymore and a bit of confusion with maybe like your national identity obviously now when living in the netherlands i don't feel like i am dutch because i'm not dutch but also i feel like i can't completely relate with finnish people either anymore i don't know it's <laughs> it's really hard to explain i feel really proud about being a finn when I am living abroad or traveling. But when I go to Finland, I don't really feel that so strongly anymore. It just gets a bit confusing in your head of where you belong anymore. Have any of you guys maybe experienced something similar? Let me know. But yeah, I think the milk egg and the macaroni and meat replacement thing is ready. So now it is time to put it all together and in the oven. Okay, time to mix this all together in here. So while I am putting this dish together, I want to talk to you about something a bit heavier in a way and that is dealing with loneliness and yeah when moving to a new place it is you know quite normal that you know you don't have friends straight away and for me personally I feel like I had an extra difficult time finding friends because I moved to the Netherlands in the middle of a pandemic which of course was you know a choice I made. I moved in the end of August 2020 and back then things were like looking a bit better but then in the autumn and winter time it got worse again and the Netherlands went into a very long lockdown. It was pretty much impossible to 
try and find friends because everything was closed and I also work from home so I couldn't even really meet people through work. Yeah, usually like hobbies, school, work. These are like the kind of first places where you meet new people. For me, those things weren't really an option. So I must say that was a yeah really difficult time. I did move here with my boyfriend, but he is also not from Leiden. He is from another part of the country. So he also didn't know anyone from here. Neither of us could you know, kind of get to know people through each other either. So <laughs> that option was also counted out. I'm a person who finds friendships really important. I'm sure most of us do. And like, I really need that kind of time that I spend with friends. I did have a few friends that I knew from before, but they lived in different cities. So I didn't really see them very often. And because of that, um, I had to deal with a bit of loneliness and difficult emotions that rose up together with that. But something good that came out of that is that I really learned to spend time with just myself. And I actually really learned to enjoy my own company. I did a lot by myself. And I don't know, I kind of got this new attitude that if I want to do something, even if I don't have someone to do it with, I'm just gonna do it by myself. And you know, I'll still have a great time. But yeah, when moving to another country, do be prepared that it might take some time to find friends. Yeah, you also will most likely have to also deal with a bit of loneliness. But at the same time, maybe like me, you will also learn how to enjoy just your own company as well, which is kind of nice too. Time to pop this in the oven. Okay, I have now popped the casserole in the oven and it needs to be there for about 40 minutes. And I've managed to create quite a mess. So while the casserole is cooking, I'm gonna do some cleaning. And voila, it is done. When eating this meal, it is important to add some ketchup. I'm not even a big of a ketchup person. This is the one meal that even I eat ketchup with. <laughs> Let's taste. Hmm. Taste is like macaroni latico. <laughs> we were earlier discussing about like loneliness and friendships. And I think that's a good gateway to our next topic, which is about friendships that you have back in your home country. The sad truth is that they will change and it can be tough because people who you thought would be friends with you for life, maybe turn out not to be with a lot of people. You maybe first have a lot of contact with them, but then it kind of slowly dies out. Like you're still friends and everything with these people, at least most of them. I've even had some friendships that don't know, I wouldn't maybe even call friendships anymore. Yeah, it's just sad noticing how you keep in touch like less and less all the time. And personally, I'm not saying this to like blame anyone. I understand life comes in the way. Yeah, this doesn't of course apply to everyone. You will have friendships that stay just as strong even when moving to another country. And with some friends, it might even get stronger. I have a lot of friends that have come to visit me and I am super grateful for that. When I'm visiting back home in Finland and meeting up with people, of course it's lovely, but you do notice that with some people, it just doesn't feel the same anymore. I don't know, you just realize that some people that you used to be best friends with it just isn't the case anymore and that's just sad and I think this applies to probably everyone in their lives it's you know normal that some friendships kind of fade out yeah for me personally it has been something that I've found a bit difficult to deal with and I don't know I have somehow a bit of a hard time trying to accept it. As said, I'm not blaming anyone. It's also partially my own fault, but it is also lovely when you do have friends who really make the effort to keep in touch and come visit you. And I am really, really grateful for that. That's been really lovely. And of course, with some friends, even though you're not a lot in touch with, it never really changes. Even though you only talk for once in a while, every few months, it always feels the same. It always a bit depends on the person and the friendship. Yeah, but it's just something I've thought about a lot. I know I've been talking about a lot of a bit negative feelings and experiences, but one positive thing that I want to mention is um, that you really do learn a lot about yourself. You kind of have to rely on yourself on a whole new way that you've never 
done before. You put yourself in a completely new environment, everything is new. You are not only exploring that new place, but also yourself in a whole new level. So after I've said all this, would I still say that moving abroad is worth it and something that you should do? Yes, 120% definitely you should. Like I said, you learn so much about yourself, but not just that. You learn about the world, you get to experience a new culture, you get to meet some amazing people you otherwise would never meet, and you get to have so many amazing experiences, try new things, get out of your comfort zone, you know, live life. And if you are someone who has ever thought or doubted that, ah, should I move? Like if it's something that you've thought about doing for a long time, do it. Honestly, just do it. You know, what's the worst thing that can happen? I feel like this is one of those things that a lot of people make out to be more difficult and scary in their head than what it actually is. Because the thing is, even if it wouldn't work out, you can always move back to your home country or move to another country if the first one didn't fit for some reason. Of course, you know, you might have to get a new job and a new apartment and these kind of things. But you know, those kind of like external things usually have a way of working out in the end. It probably will take some effort and hassle and stress and excitement, scariness, everything to take that leap and move to another country. But it is definitely, definitely worth it. So if you have thought of it, just do it. Honestly, just do it. If I can do it, so can you. I also believe experiences are much more worth than any maternal possessions. So you shouldn't let, you know, an apartment or having a lot of things get in the way of your dreams. You can always buy new things, but experiences and the time that you have on this earth is limited. So you better make the most out of it. But yeah, I think this wraps up today's video. I know it was a bit different from what I have done before. It was a bit more personal and about a bit more heavy subjects. I hope this video will work as a good motivation for anyone who wants to move abroad. Or like I said in the beginning, if you already live abroad, I hope maybe this video brought you some comfort. If you have anything you want to say, any questions or any thoughts that came up from this video, or if you want to share about your experience about moving or living in a different country, please feel free to comment down below. And if you have enjoyed this video, please remember to also subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys again on my next adventure. Bye bye!